Okay, we're starting off right by the waypoint inside the academy. I'm going to come on through this door. We're going to try and finish up Act 3, or at the bare minimum, get through this academy in this episode. Now, if you come over here, um, you'll be able to use Spirit Vision. And there will be one, two, three, four, five, six spirits around this table, along with the three that are here for the uh, armor quests. Uh, now, these guys, we like, like the Spirit of Strength, uh, Constitution, Wits, etc., etc., uh, they will boost up uh, one of your attributes by five, usually the one that's in their name. Uh, and then they will reduce another one of your attributes by five. So they kind of do like that spider's kiss where we got plus two wits and minus two constitution. But you can pick and choose which attribute gets boosted. Uh, you can't really choose. Like, they're locked in. Like the intelligence one will boost intelligence and it will decrease wits or finesse. So you can't completely pick and choose, but you can customize their stats a little bit more with that if you want. Uh, and actually, the only one we're going to use is the Intelligence Master on Losa. Uh, get that up. And that's all we're going to do. So now Losa has five finesse total, and she has an extra five on intelligence, and that's permanent. Uh, this door is locked. Whoops. This door is locked, but in Act 2, if you finish the Driftwood Arena, you'll get a key in, like, the Champion's Vault, whatever it is, and that key is used to open that door. Uh, I think it's called, like, the Key of the One or something. Uh, if you use Spirit Vision, you can talk to the ghost of this guy. I think this is supposed to be the arena here, but it doesn't feel like an arena at all. Uh, it's kind of weird. Um, but if you come up here, we're going to have Fane unchain. Everybody else is going to hide. Make sure they're hiding in front of this door. If they're on this side of the door, they'll be locked out here. Uh, but we're going to have Fane come up here. Um, you don't initiate combat with this thing right away. Um, you'll do dialogue first. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest. Peace of mind. All the usual things. And then I'm going to Phoenix Dive up over here to start fighting. Um, again, these guys are on this side of the door. If they were over here, it'd be locking them out. So what I'm going to do, I'm not too worried about killing all these guys. Though if you want max uh, experience, you do need to kill the four add-ons and this guy. But if you just kill this guy, that will uh, end the encounter still. So I'm just going to smack away at him a little bit. Um, I was hoping we could knock him down, but that doesn't look very likely. Um, yeah, that's not happening. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to go invisible to end our turn here. He has Chameleon Cloak because he's wearing the Shadow Prince's Signet. Uh, that just gives you uh, Chameleon Cloak as a ability. Then we're going to... Oh, I was going to delay turn, but we're burning. So I am no longer invisible. That's not good. Um, so what we are going to do is... Just knock him down, I guess. And then I think we're going to sprout some wings over here. Um, you know... I shouldn't have done that. Because I was going to like fly into a corner and make them come to me. Um, instead, I'm actually going to go invisible again. Uh, this... Ooh. I don't know, we might be able to kill just that one, but I'm not sure. Eh, let's try it. Uh, it looks like we killed them both. Okay, I don't know which one died first. Now, you're going to want to do this fight, though, especially if you were sworn to the God King. But even if you weren't, you're going to want to do it for quest XP later on. In this great garden, we're going to find the Blade of the Swarmbreaker, and that is very important uh, plot-wise. And uh, these are level 17, we're at level 18, so who cares. Um, come back up here the way we came in. And yeah, we're going to actually use Ifen so he can talk to that uh, bird spirit. See, he's got Pet Pal, so he's got to be the one to talk to it. Over there. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, hold on, but I'm, uh, I'm the champion of the arena. Why, why is that a lie? Oh, well. What if I talk to her with Fane? 
just have to be like the party leader. Oh, I thought you needed Pet Pal to talk to them. Okay. Uh, Alright, and you just get a quest reward uh, for beating the arena, even though it really wasn't an arena. But whatever, we still get quest for it, or quest XP for it, so I'm not complaining. Alright, so remember we put that on here earlier, and it activated this thing here. So that's going to shoot a big beam of energy over to this Eternal Reflector. If you click the Eternal Reflector, it will spin. It'll shoot a beam out, uh, and it'll go right over to that one. So I'm going to go and click that one, and bring us into this room here. And slowly but surely, they'll walk on over. Alright, I hit it again, and one more time, boom, now it goes into this little thing on the wall, comes out that side, goes that one. Now before we go over there, I'm going to clear out some stuff in this room. Now there is a door over here that is locked, and if you read through a bunch of stuff in this room, you can figure out the way to unlock it. I'm going to do it the way that I just, just go. oh man, I actually forget how this works. Alright, um, I think I'm going to be doing this in the right order, if not, oh well. Uh, so I think you step on this plate first. Then you go and click this button, and it has to be in the correct order. After you click that button, you gotta spin this little tablet. And then once you've spun around that little tablet, you gotta click the right lever. Not the left one, gotta click the right one. And then the door will open. All right, now, in here, uh, you'll find the spirit of Raidalus. Talk to him. Don't just run your way through. You'll uh, accidentally uh, use source vampirism on him. And then once you talk to him, you're going to come over to this little skeleton, this uh, Tarin, Tarian Gray. All right. And uh, you should see a spirit of them. Here we go, right there. Alright, and you're going to show her where Raidalus is at. Alright, those two were, I guess, a couple in life, and now they're dead, and they can't find each other, even though they're a room apart. Uh, you come up here, talk to them, and uh, there you go. You get some quest XP, a little reward, and easy peasy. Alright, and then coming up here, you can just loot around uh, the area. Some of the stuff is useful, some of the stuff is less useful. Uh, through our super amazing thievery ability, I have pretty much an unlimited amount of gold, so I'm not really too concerned about looting at the moment. Um, you can if you need it, uh, or if you just think it's fun. Uh, if you want to hear though, you will find a Dazing Bolt scroll. That's the AoE uh, skill right here. You just do that. And the reason that scroll is here is in case you can't figure out the puzzle in here, or if you don't have a lot of phase capacitors, even though they give you two or three in this area, I think. Uh, you'll find an eternal artifact. Those are nice for late, late game. Uh, storage room key. Alright, I guess that would open the door without going through all this, maybe? I don't know. Uh, we're going to loot some other stuff in here. Just the desks. You can loot all these like floating bookshelves if you want. Uh, this is going to be lower level than me, so I'm not sure why I'm even... Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, if you somehow managed to get through all of Act 2 and you didn't learn Spirit Vision or Source Vampirism, uh, this will teach you Spirit Vision and this will teach you Source Vampirism. So that is potentially useful. Uh, and then coming through here, back to this blue beam, uh, we gotta spin this one right here. This will be the last one we spin. And it will shoot a beam into here, transfer down, shoot out of here, and now this thing is powered up. But we still have these two uh, little squares that need to be powered before this lever can be pulled. Now, if you have uh, a bunch of phase capacitors, so you get these from like the little protector bots. Um, I got most of those from that cave where you find uh, the sword here. Uh, that's on this island. Uh, but you get some of those, put them on there. Now, if you couldn't find these and you don't want to waste like an hour going through finding them, if you just make it rain in this area, 
and you can shock one and it usually shocks the other. It's a little weird how the water interacts with those. Uh, Thunderbolt grenade, if these are both wet, should be big enough to hit them both. Uh, you just barely, like you have like a pixel where you can hit them both with that because it has to overlap the center, I think, or at least a, a certain part near the center. Um, so you can do that without those, or if you have only one of them, you just hit the one with any lightning ability. That's why Dazing Bolt Scroll was in that other room, so that you have a backup. All right, and then open that doorway, and now you'll see the non-recruited Godwoken here. So we have the Red Prince and Beast that we do not have in our current party, but if you look, uh, they are undead versions of themselves. Can't really see Red Prince too well there. There we go. Um, so this feels more like the arena, and also this is the source pool, the endless amount of source refill for this act if you... Uh, need it for whatever reason so over here we talked to this guy uh, you actually don't want your way through all right yeah hit two um, at this point you can't go back on the island uh, you are stuck here now so we're gonna load this up and then we're gonna get through this last part here and that'll be the end of act three and the end of this video all right, uh, so it's the first Godwoken to get to the uh, little thing down here, which is supposed to be like Lucian's tomb, I think is what it's like. I don't know. It's just a big thing of source. I don't know. Because Lucian's tomb is later on in the game, so I don't know why I said that. <laughs> it's supposed to just be a big source of source. <laughs> All right, so we've got Red Prince over here. Uh, a lot of physical, not a lot of magic. Uh, so I'm not really well suited for one-on-one -on -one, uh, for us to target with Fane. Beast over here, though, very little physical armor. So he is the perfect target for Fane to take down one-on-one. -on -one. All right, and the armor's gone, and he is knocked down. I'm actually going to take a minute here, since we've got some open memory slots there, and I just mentioned Fane not being great one-on-one -on -one against magic armor. Uh, somewhere in here, we should have a skill book that will fix that, um, if I'm not blind. Thought we had it. Uh, maybe we bought it with Losa instead of stealing it with Fane? I don't know. Uh, Blaze Ray, Flaming Tongue, something for something. There we go, Firebrand. So Firebrand will give us a little bit of extra fire damage on our melee attacks, just to see how much we'll use it right here. So we go activate Firebrand, and it actually activates an aura around us, so like Iphen has it because he's up there, so that'll actually make his bow deal some extra fire damage. I think it scales just off your pyro ability. All right, so 280, or 228, that's not, that's not too bad. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of points in Pyro, but that, uh, that'll help. Oh, and he has four. Oh, okay, they're working as a team. Normally they don't. Huh. All right, let's teleport Red over there. That actually took Sabeel out of combat, so we're just going to bring her down a little bit. And then we're going to hit both of them right there. All right, and uh, yeah, this should be pretty easy to take care of these two. Um, the more custom characters you have in your party, uh, the harder this will be. The more origin characters you have in your party, which is our whole party, the easier this will be. Uh, you could have this be a fight of, uh, f like, four on six if you have an all-custom character party. Uh, if you use some kind of mod to make it where you have all the uh, origin characters in your group, uh, you could have nobody here, and you just walk on through to the next part. All right. Uh, now, Fane has glass cannon, so he got knocked down in one hit, which is sad. All right. And then he'll get right back up, though, in just a second. There we go. And unfortunately, you can't loot their bodies. All right, and then once you get down here, now if you really, really want to maximize XP, you could like make it rain over here and use a thunderstorm, which I'm actually going to uh, try to do. Um, I don't know if you have to actually click on this or if you just can get close enough to it. 
Um, I think you actually have to click it. So I'm going to get as close as I can. Make it rain over there. Uh, this part, yeah, you, you would need the source federal thing if you used Thunderstorm in the last fight. If you didn't, you know, there, no, there's still enough source over there. And you can just eat a source orb if you really want to try this out. Uh, even though this is not necessary, it is kind of fun if it works. All right, and I'm going to go and use as much buffing up as I can. Bedroll, peace of mind, encourage, and then thunderstorm right there, and have Fane spam click this. All right, so now there's a thunderstorm going, and these guys come in. You might kill some of the minions. Uh, anyway, there's a chance you can kill some minions with a thunderstorm or a bloodstorm over here. Okay, we got one. Ah, oh, we got two. Okay, so we did get a little bit of extra experience by doing that. Uh, some of them are real close, though. Like, that one, pretty close. That one's real close. Eh, that one's kind of close. Yeah, so if I had uh, pumped her up with some more stuff, like maybe an intelligence potion or something, we could have killed them all. Um, and then uh, that's basically the end of Act 3. Uh, it's not entirely the end, but the next one I'm going to put in a combat showcase video. So they're, they're, there's a little bit of stuff being skipped over on this because I'm putting in the combat showcase. The Red, not the Red Prince, the Shadow Prince and Salaman are a prime example of that. They were not uploaded in the same playlist. They're uploaded in the combat showcase playlist. That looks new down there. I don't remember seeing that little glowy thing on this part before. Anyway, uh, we're going to get over to this combat, but I don't want to make this video too super long. I'm trying to keep it under half an hour. So, uh, I'm going to do a combat showcase video real quick. Well, record it. I don't know if it'll be uploaded real quick, but I'll see you guys in the next one.